Hello friends, this video on solutions part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll talk about the boiling point. What is the impact of boiling point on adding a solute to a solvent? So before we understand the impact, let's understand what is the boiling point. See, there are three factors that govern the boiling point. The first is a liquid will boil when its vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So for example, you take a glass of water or in you know in a utensil, steel utensil may be reheated, you will, the moment it start boiling, you'll see bubbles coming up, right? So it boils, it boils when its vapor pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. If you do this in an open container, because if the container is open, the pressure here is nothing but atmospheric pressure. So when the vapor pressure here of this liquid, when the vapor pressure here of this liquid is equal to the atmospheric pressure, it will start boiling. Correct? Please note the vapor pressure of liquid equals atmospheric pressure, then the liquid start boiling in a container which is open. Right? The moment you close the container, it's a different story altogether because the moment you close the container, container, the pressure here will not be atmospheric pressure. And that's why if you see the pressure cooker, even if you heat at very high temperature, the liquid inside it doesn't boil because the pressure is not atmospheric pressure and that's why it boils easily you must have learned that uh, thing I'll not go deep into that but just understand the concept of boiling a liquid will boil only when the vapor pressure here because of the liquid here will be equal to the atmospheric pressure now the question is this is always constant for earth at least and that is nothing but 1.013 bar at a normal temperature, room temperature, this is the constant. So this is something we should have to increase. How will you increase this? So this is something we should increase by heating. The moment you increase heat, the vapor pressure increase. For example, if you have not, if you just keep the liquid here in room temperature, the pressure is let's suppose small p. The moment you heat this, the pressure increase. Heat it further, it increase all the more. And at a point is reached where this increased pressure equals the atmospheric pressure because this is open. Assuming this is open. It is open here. So these are open. A point is reached when this atmosphere, this pressure of the liquid becomes equal to atmospheric pressure, and that is the place where it starts boiling. See if you see here this graph. If you lower the temperature, this is the boiling point of solvent. If you increase the temperature, the vapor pressure increase. This is the vapor pressure. This is the graph. For example, in this temperature, let's suppose this is let's suppose uh, five degrees Celsius, right? the vapor pressure of the liquid is this much. You increase the temperature to let's suppose 10 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure is this much. This is the vapor pressure. You increase it further to the boiling point, you will see that the vapor pressure equals one atmospheric pressure. Right? And then it starts boiling. This is a container which is open. Open container. At STP. Correct. So the logic I'm telling is first thing is the liquid start boiling when the vapor pressure will be equal to the normal atmospheric pressure that is one atmospheric pressure or 1.013 bar. Now the question is this is constant. We have to increase this vapor pressure. To increase the vapor pressure of the liquid we have to boil it. So if you boil it the vapor pressure of the liquid which is in the P denoted by this capital P if you see this is increasing. This is increasing all the more. All the more. So once it reaches this is increasing. This is the one which I'm talking about. Right, the one in the red hair is the one in the red hair. If it increases to a point where this P becomes one atm, the liquid will start boiling. That is the second concept. The third concept, which you already know, is the moment you add a solute to a solution, the pressure decreases. We have seen this Rolle's law. P is nothing but P naught into X A. If let's suppose this is my P naught. This is my P, the pressure after adding a solute decreases because this is less than 1, right? So that is something we should know, right? On adding solute, vapor pressure of solution decreases. So if you, if you think of these, if you add these three concepts, you can visualize that the moment you add a solute to a solution, the pressure decrease. The pressure decrease, that means the pressure decrease, that means you need more heat 
you need more heat to boil you need more heat correct see for example i'm just putting some random value the normal pressure of let's suppose a liquid is 0 0.5 0 0.5 et correct so to heat it you need to make it to 1 atm to boil it actually and for that let's suppose you need 500 joule of energy or let's suppose we talk about temperature you need the temperature to be 100 degree celsius this is pure solid the number you talk about the solution this 0.5 atm will become 0.4 atm it will go down correct this is let's suppose 0.5 atm the normal room temperature for this pure solution the moment you add this uh, impurity this becomes 0.4 atm now the the atmospheric pressure is same that you can't change so now to heat to boil this instead of 100 degrees celsius you may need 120 degrees celsius correct because now the, the here the journey was less 0 0.5 to, point, uh, to 180 that is 0 0.5 atm the difference is less here is 0 0.4 to 180 that is 0 0.6 atm difference right so the, the journey is big the journey is bigger so you need more heat you need more energy you need more temperature and thus the boiling point increase the moment you add impurity the boiling point increase hope you understand the concept what is happening here the boiling point as i told is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid increases becomes equal to atmospheric pressure also i told the moment you heat the boiling point the pressure increase so with all these three facts we can conclude that the boiling point of a solution will increase the moment you add solvent right so as i have just explained you that if this is my p naught is the pressure of the normal solution or let me put it here p naught this becomes p and p is always less than p naught right because of the henry law p will be p naught into mole fraction so the, the vapor pressure decreases the moment you add a solute to this solution and thus you need more temperature if you see uh, to heat it because to boil it actually why because if you see the boiling will happen when this p naught this p when you heat this, this vapor pressure will increase and it will touch 1 atm if you are talking about open container and if you see in this graph also we can see that more temperature is required to boil the solution this is my solvent pure solvent but if you talk about this solution it, need, it needs more temperature to boil this is the uh, boiling point temperature for solution and this is the temperature for a pure solvent and there is a delta tb right and why it is happening because i told the vapor pressure of pure water is 1.0 one three bar at hundred degrees Celsius, but the moment you ink, uh, add some solute, it is more than hundred degrees Celsius. Correct? Why? Because at hundred, if you talk about it, suppose I fix hundred degrees Celsius temperature. So now I, at hundred degrees Celsius, and hundred degrees Celsius, let's suppose I am fixing the temperature. The pressure of the pure solvent is how much? One atm. But pressure of this solution will be less than 0.180 maybe 0.980 why because temperature is fixed this is 180 the moment you add solid it becomes 0.980 that means you need more temperature to heat it right so maybe at 120 degrees celsius it will boil so please note the boiling point of solution is always higher than the boiling point of pure solvent let me write boiling point of solution is always higher than the boiling point of pure solvent this elevation if you see this elevation boiling point again depends only on number of solute it doesn't depend on uh, the chemical property of the solute right you add similar moles of uh, urea or sim similar moles of sodium chloride to a fixed amount of water the elevation in the boiling point will be same so this is also colligative property since it depends only on the number of solute Correct. One mole of sucrose in 100 gram of water, it will boil at 100.4 degree Celsius. Because the moment you add a solvent, sorry, solute to a solvent, the boiling point increases. Now, if I am saying if delta T B is the elevation in boiling point, right? 
so delta tp is nothing but my uh, boiling point of the pure solvent minus boiling point of the solution it's other way around actually because this is bigger so boiling point of solvent sorry boiling point of solution minus boiling point of solvent correct experimentally it is seen that this tb is directly proportional to m that is molar concentration please note it's a very critical formula and this has been seen experimentally there is no proof for this at least so and this is please note this is molar concentration this is molarity actually this is not molarity so delta tb the change the elevation boiling point is directly proportional to the molar concentration just to solve this because the directly proportional won't work we need an equation so the equation is delta tb is kb into m what is kb kb is nothing but boiling point elevation constant this kb is nothing but boiling point elevation constant right or it is also called molar elevation constant please note it is also called molar elevation constant right it is also called ebullioscopic constant so there are three name to it boiling point elevation constant molar elevation constant or ebullioscopic constant so unit will be what so unit you can directly say this will be temperature and this will be molarity so if you see the unit it will be k kelvin into kg per mole why because if you if you want i can derive it for you see as i told delta tb is equal to kb into m or kb is what delta tb by m let's put the unit delta t will be in kelvin please note change in temperature will always have to write in kelvin it will not be in celsius it has to be in kelvin by m molarity is what moles per kg so if you solve this this is nothing but k kg per mole that becomes my unit of k here is some elevation point boiling point of some uh, uh, what do you call solvent water has the kb value of this boiling point of 373 and kb value of this this is in kelvin and this kb if you see is in this unit k kg per mole ethanol has a boiling point of 351 kelvin and kb of 1.2 similarly cyclohexane has the boiling point of 353 and kb of 272.79 benzene has the boiling point of 353 and kb of 2.3 all these are experimental value correct the question says 18 g of glucose is dissolved in 1 kg of water in a saucepan it's open one so if you see when the glucose is dissolved in water we know that the boiling point will decrease increase actually right there will be a increase in boiling point and that increase in boiling point is nothing but delta kb into m this formula we know kb is also given delta t is something you have to find what about the molarity molarity is something which you don't know which you can find actually why because 10 g of glucose is given the molar mass of glucose i can find and the mass of water is given so let's find first molarity molarity is what molarity starting with small m is nothing but moles of solute in this case glucose per kg of solvent in this case what what is the moles of solute moles is mass by molar mass so we have 18 g glucose by molar mass of glucose is 18 g per mole 180 g per mole sorry you can find it actually if you want c6h12o6 6 into 12 for carbon 12 into 1 for hydrogen and 6 into 16 for oxygen you will get 180 g per mole divide by kg of solvent solvent is 1 1 kg of water this is what you get so you solve this you get 0.1 1 
mole per kg. And that is nothing but 0.1 small m. So I have this value now. I can easily find delta Tb is nothing but Kb. Kb is what? We see 0.52 k kg per mole into this one is 0.1 mole per kg. We see this gets cancelled, mole gets cancelled. So from this you get 0 0.052 k. The increase in boiling point is 0 0.052 k. Now we know that the water boils at what 100 degrees Celsius or 373.15 k right boiling point of water non-pure water right at STP that is my pressure which is given at 180 m pressure or 1.103 bar pressure. So the elevation is 0 0.052 so new boiling point will be what? You have to add 373, 373.15 plus this much Kelvin, 0 0.052 Kelvin. That becomes a new boiling point, and it is nothing but 373.202 Kelvin. So this is a new boiling point of water. If you add 18 gram of glucose in the water, the water will now boil at 373.202 Kelvin, not at 373.15 Kelvin. Easy. The next is the boiling point of benzene is given. This is a pure benzene, I think. Yeah, this is a pure benzene. This is my pure benzene, let's suppose. And boiling point is given 353.23 K. Correct, fair enough. When 1.8 one, one, 1 gram of non volatile solute was dissolved in 90 gram of benzene, so we have taken some 90 gram of benzene. This is 90 gram, and in this, we are adding 1.8 gram of non-volatile solute. The boiling point has raised. The boiling point has now become 354.11 Kelvin. So there is a change in boiling point. That is nothing but 354.11 Kelvin minus 353.23 Kelvin. That is my change in boiling point. We have to find the molar mass of solute and Kb is given. So first delta T B if you find this comes out to be 2 point or 54.11 and this is 50k. So what is this value actually? Let, let's uh, find it. This is I think 0.88k. Yeah. This is the difference. This is the delta P and delta TB is equal to Kb into M, this is we know Kb is given, we can find easily find the molality. So let's find molality first. So 0 0.0 0 0.88 k is equal to Kb is given 2.53 k kg per mole into m. You solve this, you get molality as this value 0 0.88 by 2.53 moles per kg. But do we need to find the molality? No, we have to find the molar mass of solute. So this is molality, molality is what? We know that is nothing but molar mass of solute by kg of solvent. Please know it is kg of solvent, not solution. So we can do this now. This is nothing but let's suppose this is ms. Kg of solvent we know is 90 grams. So 90 grams will convert into kg, 90 by 1000 kg. You solve this equation now. So molar mass of solute is nothing but 90 by 1000 kg into 0.88 by 2.53 moles per kg. Kg kg cancel. You solve this, you get 50. Yeah. No, this is wrong actually. This is moles of solute. This is moles of solute. This is moles of this is sorry. This is moles of solute per kg. So moles of solute you get is this value. This whole value. Correct. And moles of solute is nothing but I have to find molar mass. Moles, this is moles of solute. So moles of solute is nothing but 
मास ऑफ सॉल्यूट बाय मोलर मास ऑफ सॉल्यूट इज इक्वल टू दिस वैल्यू नाइन्टी बाई वन थाउजेंड इंटू पॉइंट एट एट बाई टू पॉइंट फाइव थ्री एंड दिस इज मोल्स करेक्ट ना लेट मी find the final solution now so mass of solute is given that is 1.8 gram so i'll put this value here 1.8 gram by molar mass of solute is nothing but this whole value 90 by 1000 into 0.88 by 2.53 so you solve this you solve this equation now you will get the molar mass of solute as nothing but 58 and the unit will be this is gram and this is mole will be 58 gram per mole we can actually solve it we'll put it in this side everything on this side you'll get 58 gram per mole thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again